Another aftershock was felt in western Nepal as survivors of the devastating earthquake with Jajarkot epicenter have yet to receive relief materials. Also in this edition of Kantipur News, we have updates about the court hearings slated for today, situation in Gaza as Israel intensifies its, its attack and the ICC men's one-day international cricket World Cup. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitragar and these are the headlines of the hour. Final hearing on the writ against the pardon granted to Nagarik Unmukti Party founder Resham Chaudhary slated for today. Hearing on the writ against a judicial custody of those alleged in fake Putney's refugee scam also to be held today. Relief yet to reach the epicenter of Jazarkot earthquake Rami Dara, delaying supply of relief as army aircrafts busy in carrying politicians. Parliamentary committee begins monitoring. Around 50,000 Palestinians leave Gaza City after Israeli military opens up main road to southern Gaza. Israel claims to have destroyed at least 130 tunnel shafts in Gaza. And extraordinary Congress of All Nepal Football Association slated for today, President Pankaj Nemwang facing a trust vote. Despite the lapse of a week since the earthquake with its epicenter in Zazarkot, victims and survivors are yet to receive appropriate relief and resettlement measures. Meanwhile, another aftershock was felt in Zazarkot earlier this morning. The relief being distributed through one-door mechanism has yet to reach the victims and survivors of rural regions. More difficulties exist in settlements with no transport access. Survivors of rural parts of Jazarkot and Rukum West have been compelled to spend the chilly nights under open sky. They have alleged of unfair distribution of relief materials. The survivors have also begun falling sick as they have been compelled to spend their nights without blankets at open spaces. Those injured who have returned home after preliminary treatment have not received medicines as well. Women in their pregnancies, children and senior citizens have been worst affected by the cold. Meanwhile, local levels have said that they have not received correct data from villages at rural locations. Government officers of Lumbini province have decided to provide their three-day salary for the relief of the victims of earthquake. The meeting chaired by the Chief Secretary of the province, Radhika Aryal, decided to contribute salaries of one to three days of government employees based on their rankings for the victims of earthquake. Government officers of 11 rank and above will contribute salary of three days. Officers of 6th to 10th rank and positions equivalent to that will contribute salary of two days and assistant level officers or officer without ranks will contribute salary of one day. The Under Secretary of the Office of the Chief Minister and the Council of Ministers, Yam Kanta Pandey, said that a decision has been made to deposit the collected amount in the Disaster Management Fund of the Karnali Province Government. Hearing on the writ against the Kathmandu District Court's order for judicial custody against 22 arrested in the fake Bhutanese refugee scam has been scheduled for today. Former Deputy Prime Minister Tob Bahadur Raimaji, former Minister for Home Affairs Balkrishna Khan, Secretary Teknara and Pandey, among others alleged of involvement in the fake Putinese refugee scam, had filed a writ against the order of the Kathmandu District Court at the Patan High Court. On the 16th of June, the Kathmandu District Court had issued an order for judicial custody of those alleged of involvement in the scam. Those alleged had then filed a writ against the order on the 28th of July. However, hearing had then postponed on several occasions on different pretexts. Meanwhile, the Kathmandu District Court has set a hearing on the case against cricketer Sandeep Lamichani, who is alleged of raping a minor for today as well. The final hearing on the writ filed against the government's decision of granting pardon to jailed Nagarik Unmukti Party's founder, Resam Chaudhary, is to begin from today. 
The writ petition was filed by Sharada Kadayat, the wife of police inspector Keshav Bohora, who was killed in the Tikapur incident. Chaudhary's jail term was pardoned on the occasion of Republic Day this year. The Supreme Court had earlier upheld the decision by lower courts to imprison Resham Chaudhary for his involvement in the Tikapur massacre. However, he was granted pardon even before the detailed report of the verdict was released, which later on revealed that the Apex Court had asserted it would be wrong to politicize crimes and grant pardon in cases as such. Kadayat filed her writ petition on the 30th of May, demanding for scrapping of the pardon and to make Chaudhary serve a full sentence in prison. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public polls. Here's the question. Why are the earthquake victims yet to receive relief materials? Your options are A, incapable government, B, shortage of resources, and C, geographic complexities. Voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Walling Municipality has constructed 12 modern buildings to ensure ease in health services delivery. The municipality has said that the buildings have been constructed with 111.8 million rupees grant from the federal government. Inaugurating the newly constructed building of the health post and online system for health services and information management, Chief Minister of Gandaki Province Surindra Raj Pandey assured of coordinating with all three tiers of the government to ensure effective work in this regard. Time now for international update. Israel's military has said it had destroyed at least 130 tunnel shafts in Gaza, while it has added that 50,000 Palestinians left the Gaza city area today after its military opened up the main road to southern Gaza. A military spokesperson said people were fleeing because Hamas has lost control of the north. For weeks, Israel has told people in the north of Gaza to lead south, saying it is safer, though Hamas-run authorities have reported airstrikes today in both the north and south. The head of the UN says the number of civilians killed in Gaza shows something is clearly wrong with Israel's military operation. Meanwhile, the UN's Human Rights Commissioner has accused both Israel and Hamas of war crimes. Also on Wednesday, the Israeli Prime Minister dismissed what he said were false rumours after reports that a proposal to release 12 hostages in exchange for a three-day humanitarian pause was under discussion. Israel began striking Gaza after the Hamas attacks on 7 October, which saw 1,400 people killed and more than 200 taken hostage. More than 10,500 people have been killed in Gaza, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, including more than 4,300 children. The National Disaster Management Agency said yesterday that the worst flooding to hit Somalia in decades has killed 29 people and forced more than 300,000 to flee their homes. Authorities have scrambled to rescue thousands of stranded people from the flood water, which comes on the heels of the region's worst drought in 40 years. Video footage on Wednesday showed people struggling to cross flooded streets in the city of Baidowa in Somalia's southwest state. Heavy rains caused by the El Nino weather phenomenon have sent hundreds to shelters in the town of Ayolas in southern Paraguay, with residents bracing for more flooding on the way. At least five neighborhoods in the town, about 300 kilometers from capital Asuncion, were left underwater after storms last week caused the Parana River to burst its banks. Some 35,000 people throughout the country were affected by the rains, according to National Emergency Ministry estimates, while local authorities in Ayolas near the border with Argentina said about 3,700 were displaced. Some locals navigated small boats through the city's still flooded streets yesterday. Weather experts predict more storm clouds to roll in over the weekend due to the El Nino effect caused by a warming of the Pacific Ocean and spurring extreme weather events across the Americas. A fire at a rural chemical distribution plant northeast of Houston was contained by 1 p.m. local time yesterday. 
Country officials told, in fact, county officials told residents within one mile of Sound Resource Solutions, located 99 kilometers northeast of Houston, to shelter in homes and businesses as crews sprayed foam to extinguish burning chemicals contained in trucks and buildings in a rural area near Shepherd, Texas. Schools north of the fire kept students inside during the morning because of the large black column of smoke that rose from the blaze. The shelter-in-place zone was originally five miles but was later reduced in size. The fire began following an incident involving a forklift, said Geoff Harfield, owner of Sound Resource Solutions. The forklift operator is being treated at Houston Hospital for burns. Officials said about 19 people were working at the facility when the fire began shortly after 8 a.m. All had been accounted for. Sound Resource Solutions blends, packages and distributes oil filled and other industrial chemicals including sulfuric acid, acetone and petrochemicals like xylene and Toluene, U.S. Highway 59 was closed between Shepherd and Livingston, Texas because of the fire. Analysts say that victories notched up by Democrats in Tuesday's off-year elections show that abortion rights will continue to energize voters ahead of the 2024 presidential race. Democrats and abortion rights advocates recorded a string of electoral victories, including a conservative Ohio and Kentucky. In Ohio, a state that voted for Republican Donald Trump by eight percentage points in the 2020 presidential election, voters approved a constitutional amendment guaranteeing abortion rights. Professor Larry Sabato of the University of Virginia said that abortion would likely be one of the two or three biggest issues of 2024, not just for president, but for governor and state legislators and U.S. Senate and U.S. House races. Tuesday's outcome in Ohio extended an unbeaten streak of, in fact, for abortion access advocates since the U.S. Supreme Court's decision last year to overturn its 1972 Roe v. Wade ruling and eliminate a nationwide right to end pregnancies. The sag aftra Actors Union reached a tentative agreement with Hollywood Studios to resolve the second of two strikes that rocked the entertainment industry as workers demanded higher pay in the streaming TV era, the union said yesterday. Members of sag aftra walked off the job in mid-July, asking for an increase in minimum salaries, a share of streaming service revenue and protection from being replaced by digital replicas generated by artificial intelligence AI. The union said negotiators had reached a preliminary deal on a new contract with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents Walt Disney, Netflix and other media companies. The breakthrough means Hollywood can ramp up to full production for the first time since May, once union members vote to ratify the deal in the coming weeks. Actors had similar concerns to film and television writers, who argued that compensation for working-class cast members had dwindled as streaming took hold, making it hard to earn a living wage in cities such as Los Angeles and New York. TV series on streaming did not offer the same residual payments that actors enjoyed during the heyday of broadcast TV. Performers also became alarmed by recent advances in artificial intelligence, which they feared could lead to studios manipulating their likenesses without permission or replacing human actors with digital images. Many film and TV sets shut down when the Writers Guild of America called a strike in the spring. With little work available, many prop masters, costume designers and other crew members struggle to make ends meet. The All Nepal Football Association and FAS Extraordinary Congress has begun in Hitora. The Congress will decide on the term of ANFA President Pankaj Bikram Nimwang, who has been drawn into controversies. 49 ANFA members had demanded the suspension of ANFA President Nemwang and the General Secretary Kiran Rai. However, the ANFA Executive Committee had decided to present the proposal for suspension of the President only. 
The national football governing body is to vote in this regard today. There is a total of 105 members, including members from districts, clubs, provinces, while 87 of them are eligible to vote. Nim Wang is facing the trust vote for the first time in the history of ANFA. As provisioned by the statute of ANFA, a two-third majority is required for the suspension of any official. Nim Wang will be suspended if 58 members vote against him. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. Final hearing on the writ against the pardon granted to Resham Chaudhary and hearing on the writ against judicial custody of those alleged in fake Putney's refugee scam also to be held today. Relief yet to reach the epicenter of Jadarkot earthquake Ramidara, delay in supply of relief as army aircrafts busy in carrying politicians. Parliamentary committee begins monitoring. Around 50,000 Palestinians leave Gaza City after Israeli military opens up main road to southern Gaza. Israel claims to have destroyed at least 130 tunnel shafts. And extraordinary Congress of all Nepal Football Association slated for today, President Pankaj Nemwang facing a trust vote. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.